Hey guys, so it's the 11th of April and I'm still here in Ulsin in Montenegro and today I'm going to make you another guided tour of this beautiful seaside beach town. This guided tour is going to focus on the pros and the cons of being here and what you have to watch out for here. It's going to tell you the positives about Ulsin and the positives of Montenegro and the negatives and the things that you have to watch out for when you're here. So this is an area called Small Beach in the downtown area of Ulsin. It's my favorite area of the town. I really, really like it with all the restaurants and the bars up and down the promenade here. So the main positives here are that it's an absolutely beautiful country. And if you come here from May onwards, you're gonna get sun right the way through until October or November time. The weather's lovely and it's an absolutely beautiful country and I highly recommend a holiday here. The old, every city has an old town here and the old towns are really, really special. Very, very historic, thousands and thousands of years old and I recommend that you visit the old towns of the cities that you visit. The negatives here are, um, well, the biggest negative I've encountered here in Montenegro is smoking in the bar in the south side of Montenegro. So here in Ulsin, this is in the south of Montenegro, so it's totally different to the rest of the country. So here, for example, 80% of the population are Albanian and everybody smokes in every single cafe, bar, restaurant, on every terrace, everywhere I go, the smoking. So I've been coughing and coughing every day. All the bars, they were smoking shisha in all the bars. Um, it's um, allowed to smoke. If you're a smoker here, you'll love it because you can smoke here absolutely everywhere you go. But if you're an asthmatic, then for sure, I'll tell you one thing, uh, all sin is a no-go because there is smoking absolutely everywhere. I sat on a terrace there. I was just in a bar called Ibiza Bar, Ibiza Beach Club then. Everybody's smoking there on the terrace. Absolutely everybody smokes here. And if you're an asthmatic, you just end up coughing and coughing, guys. So that's the biggest negative of uh, the south side of Montenegro. In the rest of Montenegro, you're okay. If you're in Budvar, if you're in Tivat, it's okay. It's more modern down there. It's more European down there. So you don't have a problem with smoking down there. It's more like uh, in that part, it's more like a Serbian part of the country. Um, it's, you know, got a big Serb Serbian influence there in Budvar. Other negatives here you need to watch out for is the taxi drivers because the taxi drivers here will try and charge you absolutely anything they want. Um, it varies every time you get a taxi really. So sometimes you get a taxi and you might get a good deal. It might be five euros for a 10 minute ride and another taxi driver might charge, charge you 10 euros for the same journey or 15 euros. Uh, you need to watch out because what it is, taxi drivers will approach you here on the street and they'll offer you a taxi ride. And you need to be careful with people who do approach you here in the street because they might give you a very bad deal. Uh, you're a tourist, you don't, know, you don't know what you should pay here and you might end up paying much, much too much money, well over the odds. Now there in the old town area in the distance, the old town is very, very beautiful, but the majority of people in the old town are tourists. So when you walk around the old town, you pay a lot of money in the restaurants and the bars and the hotels there generally are quite expensive. So that's, um, it's a very beautiful old town, do visit there. But if you're gonna eat there, you will pay a bit more money for the lovely experience. And the old town's absolutely beautiful. You get nice views. So I'm not criticizing the old town at all. I'm just telling you the, um, the negatives of it. The other negative of Montenegro is it's very, very mountainous. So you're going up high mountains to get anywhere. You're driving around cliff edges and high mountains. And if you're scared of heights, then, you know, for sure you want to avoid it here. Because if, you, if you're in this country, the cars drive very, very fast. There's um, certainly lots of um, accidents on the road because the drivers drive us so fast. Um, I had a, a taxi driver, for example, took me from Budvar through to Tivat and he pulled out a bottle of uh, Rekia. I think that's the local drink here. It's uh, a strong spirit anyway started drinking it on the journey. So 
you know, here, um, there is certainly some drink driving that goes on here, and that's something to watch out for here too. But actually, the, the experience was okay. The driver, very nice guy, very, very friendly, but he liked to drink, so. <laughs> And also you want to watch out in some of the shops here. When you go to some shops here, uh, what you want to watch out for is that they don't overcharge you because you can negotiate. Everything is cash here in Ulsin. So you need cash with you. You can't pay card anywhere here. Shops, cafes, restaurants, unless you're in a hotel, everywhere is cash. So for example, one shop I went into, she had all designer clothing. She's asking me for 35 euros for um, a copy, like a copy t-shirt, like a polo Ralph Lauren or something, a counterfeit one. Um, don't pay that kind of money, guys. You should be paying 10 euros for those t-shirts, so don't pay too much. The restaurants on the right side are absolutely lovely. Um, I recommend Restaurant Plaza here. It's absolutely fabulous. The food is delicious. I would recommend that one because they're straight up with you. You pay nine euros for the fish fillets. You pay 11 euro for a fantastic seafood pizza or nine euros for a normal pizza. It's the best one in town. And next door, there's another one that's lovely. And uh, you can see the seafront from there. You'll get the view, you'll get the sun. And uh, it's only one euro 80 for a coffee in there too. And you can get a big beer, a pint of beer for three euros. So it's the same as other European countries really for prices there quite reasonable just you know just normal prices really um but uh, i just went to a beach club today called the abitha beach club on the prom and a small beer was three euros so i think it's uh, a little bit expensive for this country really because here you should be paying around two euros for that uh, maybe less for a small beer and i went to the abitha beach club and they said to me oh you know i the electric's down, so there's no coffee today. Um, you know, you, you have to pay cash. Um, I've been to a number of um, cafes and bars here where, you know, some places have no change. So make sure you have change and coins with you. Um, that would be an essential when you're here. And remember, everywhere you've got to pay cash. And I consider that um, a negative this time because, you know, I only brought 500 euros with me and that was spent within my first number of days. So. Uh, you, as soon as you arrive here, you need a taxi from the airport. That's going to cost you minimum 40 euros, maybe 60 euros. So you're going to spend your cash. So make sure you bring cash with you here because you'll have a fantastic holiday here. But you do need cash, guys. Um, if you, you know, if you've got a foreign credit card, a foreign debit card, it's going to charge you big, big, big commissions at the machine here in Montenegro. Big, big commissions, and you're going to spend a lot of money when you're here. The positives here, well, it's just um, natural nature. Um, there's 12 kilometers of beach down at Velika Beach, which is close by to here. Um, it's a very beautiful country full of mountains and nature. It has four national parks in this country. And the national parks are absolutely amazing where you can see things like pelicans and flamingos. Um, you can see them actually uh, nearby to here as well. It's only four kilometers from here. There's um, one of the biggest natural salt lakes in Europe here. And uh, Velika Beach here goes on for 12 kilometers. And Velika Beach is actually the longest beach in Europe, apparently. A German lady told me today it's the longest beach in Europe. Straight ahead, the old town that goes up here. You go up the steps here to get into the old town. The old town's 2,500 years old. Uh, it was built by the Greeks and the Romans. And um, that old town is one of the oldest old towns out of any seaside settlement in the whole of Europe. So it's absolutely amazing the history it has here. On the beach here, you can, uh, you can go on boat trips, you can get pedalos. To the left side, you've got the harbour here. And to the right side, you go up this street here on the right side and you get into the downtown area where you have all the shops. You have lots of small cafes, you can buy all the coffees, you can buy jewellery, you can buy everything you want up there really, it is really good for shopping. And on the restaurant, I recommend you stay here at Small Beach area of Olsen. So you have restaurants on the front, but all the main hotels are here on the front as well. Like you can see, you've got the Marinus Hotel straight ahead, you've got the Siena Apartments there, Mala Plaza there, you've got the Provo Hotel on the right side, 
as you go down the prom here, on the left side you've got the Continental Hotel. You go further on on the promenade there, on the left side you've got the Plaza Hotel, which is one of the best hotels to stay in, definitely the best location. It has a fantastic restaurant, it looks very modern and clean. So I'd recommend you stay there. I think it's about 90 pounds a night at the moment in April time for that hotel. But there's lots of options of guest houses, hostels, B&Bs, if you go up into the town and you can, get, you can get one for about 25 or 30 euros a night. So guys, um, please give some comments about my video, give some likes as well and information about here in Olsen. And thank you very much for watching my guided tour today. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel at Travel with Col. And that's Col with a C O L. Thank you very much, guys. Bye bye.